Hey there. So I've decided to put a hold on working on this silicone face here in favor of just working with a plastic design for now. Running into all sorts of complications with fitting the face to the mechanism inside. So I printed this off to have something to work with. The eye mechanism is all set up inside here. Things are working well. Here's a different view. Now I've got the servos controlling the y-axis as well, and they do actually work fine, but because of the way I've got the servos set up behind there, they are, they're actually going to move in opposite directions if I use the controller I've got down here. But the intention isn't for this thing to be a puppet anyway, so this, this is not really what it's for. Anyhow, here's the mechanism in the back. So uh, somewhat different than in previous videos. So I've separated each eye to its own uh, modular component, resting on this central part. So these connections here between the servo and the eyeball, I've just created these custom plastic connections. Now I think a lot of people use these, um, these metal connections here. This is a rose joint, I think they're called, with these uh, threaded rods. The issue for me here is I don't actually have a saw for, for cutting one of these rods down to size, so I've just gone with these plastic parts. But actually that works out pretty well. While it's a fairly normal part on the top, the part I've got down on the side, I've got this bizarre sort of uh, bend going on. So the join here between the eye and the module got this metal universal joint. Now I tried uh, printing one of these in plastic, but I found that at the size that I needed it to be, it was the plastic was just too brittle for this to work. I think if maybe if I used a different kind of plastic, or just really tried to finesse the design a bit, I think I could get this to work. And I might do that in the future. I like the idea of being able to print all of the components in plastic. But I'm not going to worry about that for now. So I've got that one metal component in there. So taking a look back at the face here, I've got some internal connections here for a friction fit. Just sort of slots into place. And it seems to hold on quite, quite firmly, so that's good. Now eventually I'm going to work on some uh, mechanism for some, some neck movement here. But for this video, I'm going to focus on making the mouth. What I'm thinking of doing is I'll take this uh, internal component here. Let me just put this back for a minute. Here, I've got an older version of this thing here. I'm going to take this internal component and redesign it with a servo housing somewhere on the bottom here. Uh, something like this over here. And then I'll print it out and uh, use this. I'll fit one of these things in here. Maybe not one of those are pretty beefy servos. Hopefully I can use something smaller. Anyhow, let's head over to the uh, computer. Okay, so here's the uh, design in the computer that I've got. I've cut out the mouth part there. There's the mechanism in the back. Anyhow, right now I want to work on this mouth here. So let me isolate this. So I'm going to connect this here to the uh, dark blue part. I've already roughed out a basic shape for one of these servos, so I can just grab one of these and move it into position. I'll just line up this uh, axis right in the center there. I think this should be good as a point of articulation, but I'm just going to check this by actually uh, setting it up. So here on the side, Let's just make sure this is a good uh, point of articulation for the jaw. That seems like it'll work fine. The mouth is only going to open like one or two centimeters, so it doesn't really have to be terribly accurate. So with the mouth part down there, it's probably going to be too heavy for the servo right now, so I'm going to cut away some of this material so it's not so heavy. 
And over on the lips, I've got uh, sort of a part of the teeth still on there. Let's get rid of that. There we go. So with that done, now I'm going to create a connection between the servo and the, the mouth part. So this here is a servo horn I created for the eye mechanism. So it fits uh, perfectly onto the servo already, right here. But I don't need this connection on the end, so I'm going to cut that off with another cube. Just sort of erase the end there. And I'll use this other cube to create a sort of a different shape for it. Now it might be a good idea for me to connect this with some kind of an, an arrangement that uses some, uh, maybe some screws or something. But what I'm thinking of doing is I'll print this uh, rectangular piece off in a urethane plastic. So it should be very flexible. And I'll print the bottom part off in a, a solid plastic with a hole in it. So by squeezing the uh, the urethane plastic part into the other one, it should actually hold in place without any additional mechanical support required. So even this, though this hole is very shallow, I shouldn't actually have to use any screws or glue or anything like that. I'm looking at this and I think I probably want this to be angled at about a 45 degree and not, not straight down. It's not modeled in this uh, here, but the, the neck mechanism is actually quite thick, so I'm, I'm worried about this bumping into it, so that's why I'm doing this. Alright, that looks good. Now I just need a housing for the servo. So I've already got one up in the eye mechanism, so I can just grab that and create a bit of a variation on it over here. I worked out the tolerances on this, so the servo should fit really pretty snugly in there. And the holes are in more, more or less the right position. So now I want to attach this uh, housing to the dark blue internal component there. Let me just recategorize this on the right so that I can keep track of things. There we go. I'm just going to extrude this side outwards and try to create a connection here. Now the one thing I have to worry about on the inside here is this, this particular edge. There are some wires that run through here, so I need to make sure there's enough clearance. That should be fine. It's a bit wacky looking, but it, it'll work out totally fine. Alright, I think I can print these parts now. So for printing a part like this, there's a bit of a problem because there's no flat edge. So unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of uh, support material. Now, I could probably do this housing as a, a modular component itself and uh, slide it into the part there, and I might do that in the future. But for now, I just want to print it out as one part to test this out. So for the support material here, you can see where the, there's going to be a ton of support material, unfortunately. Not the best way of doing this, but... Now for this part here, it's no problem at all. Just rotate this onto the flat surface on the side, and this should print out without any support at all. Alright, a few hours later, got these parts printed out. Alright, so I've got that in place now. All right, so here's the silicone face I made earlier. So I'm going to sand this down so it's somewhat smoother, and then um, paint it. Now, I probably could have done a better job sanding this, but there's a very good chance that I'm going to end up reprinting this after I've made some modifications anyway, so I'm not really too concerned about getting this thing perfect. I think it probably reads better on camera painted like this. Anyhow, things are looking pretty good now. The mouth is moving well. The eyes work. It's looking a bit creepy because there's the eyes aren't painted yet. 
So I'll do the same thing for these eyes as I did with the, uh, the eyes in the silicone face over here. So I'll probably do a video about this later on. These here are solid, so I can't use these. But I learned a few things in creating them, so when I go to do the, the uh, proper eyes here, they uh, should look a bit better. There's a bit of a cavity on the inside of these ones. Anyhow, that's, that's it for this video. I hope that was interesting.